Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at Bitcoin and all of the Julys in this cryptocurrency's history. What has it done? What has it meant to crypto after July? So make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, make sure you hit all so you get updated with the content as it comes out, daily videos from here. Let's dive in. So let's first start with the market caps. 1.6 trillion Bitcoin today, 41,700. We've just crossed over to a new month. So we're in August now. We closed July at around that 41,700. Ethereum is doing quite well. You can see the altcoins are rallying back now. This is what we have been waiting for to at least see a bounce, see some green in their Bitcoin value. So Ethereum's at 3%, Binance nearly 4, Cardano 1.6. Uh, they're still slightly down. You know, we're hoping this would be above that 3,200 Satoshi. So you can see Cardano is at 3,100. But at least this is a bit of a sign that we're seeing some sort of movement on cryptos. But again, we know they've been smashed for the last few months. Some people are seeing gains on their dollar values, but you're seeing gains on Bitcoin anyway. We've gone through this many, many times. If you are unfamiliar with the premise of an early stage uh, crypto cycle, Make sure you check out the other videos on the channel and we'll continue to cover it as well so that you can understand how to reduce your risk and increase your gains. So let's look at fear and greed. 60 today. Yesterday was 60. Last week was 27 was the fear and then we were extreme fear last month at 21. Remember why we look at this? Because we have our fear and greed plan. We are currently sitting at a profit uh, if we look at today's price, 41 or well, currently 41,900. I've got in here 41,700. So we're basically 23% up on the Bitcoin. So buying the lows during May, June, July has netted us an average Bitcoin price of $34,000, $34,080. So for a round number, 34K, which means that the current price of nearly $42,000 for one BTC, our profit is 23%. Pretty decent after a, a move down from the highs of 65,000. And we're not buying every dip. Remember our saying, not all dips are created equal. We're not someone, we're not one of the influencers talking about buying every single dip because I, I guess a lot of people work on the premise that people are not tracking their investments. They're basically just gambling, throwing money into the market and hoping for the best. We don't want to take that risk. We want to be tracking what we're doing so that we can come out uh, much healthier returns at the end of a bull market. So looking at the dominance, we are having a small pullback. Good to see. We talked about this yesterday and the days before. We're looking at potentially around that 47 to 48% level of Bitcoin dominance having a pullback because you want to see it break through, retest some of the old resistance levels, hopefully use it as support and then start to make another move up again. As mentioned in yesterday's video, should we break down past that 44% level, then maybe we could consider that Bitcoin isn't going to gain any more strength in the market and maybe it's going to spill over into altcoins which means altcoins would start to gain against their Bitcoin value. Potentially money is leaving the market entirely and uh, you know, sort of just spreading out across the market again and possibly just going into stable coins while people wait for a clearer direction. But at the moment, we're just seeing it break through the old highs and come back to retest it. So the, the sign we want to see from here is the market to go up. This is the Bitcoin dominance, BTC.D. And this just gives us an overview of how the altcoins are are relating to the Bitcoin value. So if Bitcoin value is going up, then alts are basically bleeding. They are going down. Don't be fooled about their dollar value. Julys, this is where we're at. Julys, we now have 12 months of July, 12 different data points to look at for July because this is using the Brave New Coin Liquid Index for Bitcoin, the BLX, and it started in July of 2010. So that's the earliest data that I can find on, on the net uh, with significant price ranges that we can use and some volume in it. So all we want to do is just look back and to see what stage of the market, uh, yeah, what stage was Bitcoin in? Was it going up? Was it going down? Was it sideways? Was it coming off a period of um, a strong bull run? Or was it already accumulating at a low before it took off? So I've circled a few here that I would use as data points because the market has essentially cooled off. I mean, we only have this here. The market was a July and the market went down, you know, move up, but then it 
sank to a few cents. The market ran up and then July happened as the market was falling. So basically we're looking here, the market has been falling. July's had a little bit of an up month. Uh, this point here, July went up, but the market was on a uh, was on an uptrend already. The same goes for uh, 2015, 2016, and 2017. So that was one big, long bull market. But let's keep going here with 2013. So July was a low point. So zooming in on this, we had a good solid bull market from late 2011 into April 2013. And then the July low happened and the market took off again just for a few more months to the later stage of that bull market, which uh, culminated in around December, November, December of 2013. So July at that point called for a low and then it was up from there. But then after that bull market, July was a down month and the market kept going. July was a small top and the next couple of months were down and sideways. Uh, then the next bull market took off. All right, so July was again down, but it was within a bull market going up. So it only had a couple of months down before it took off again. July was another turning point again in 2017. So there was a top in June, came back down in July and then took off. And then in 2018, it was one of those months within this major long 12 months down. Uh, it was pretty much one of the main green months that uh, the market just had some relief. So it was a, a relief rally. The market took off for that one month, about five weeks. And then the next two, three, six months were down. Again, after the 2019 basically FOMO bull market, which lasted one, two, three, four, five, about five and a half months if we add in the extra couple of weeks either side. Uh, July came in as a down month and then the market continued to fall from that point. 2020, July turned around and uh, the next month had a little bit of a, a stall. September was down and then we took off. So this brings us to our last July month in 2021. What could it be? Could it be 2018 where it was a, basically a relief month before the market continued to fall? Um, just like 2019 after the market took off and then had a little bit of a pullback for the next several months? Or are we looking at one of these July months where the market continued to move up. It was just a bit of a turn or a bit of a significant move, break through some resistance levels, and then we started to go. It's possible that we are these periods, but the good news to that is that it could be coming towards the end of the move. This happened at the beginning of the move, but these were very short moves if you had been in Bitcoin for a number of years. So we had six months up, then we had about six to eight months sideways and down, but then we took off. So this was really the, the longest period of what happened after a July up month. The market fell after that point. So if we look at the history of Julys on Bitcoin, we want to make sure we're gathering this from a similar uh, section of the market. And so we've got bull markets here, bull market here. This is another bull market and a mini bull market through here. And then the July periods happened after the bull markets. And what continued after that was more down period. This one was within a bull market, the market went up. This one was after a bull market and the market went down. So we've got another bull market here. July's happened after the bull market. Are we going to continue down like we did on the other one, two, three, four occasions? Or are we in the middle like we saw in 2013 and the market went well, continued, continued up from that point? We've got four on the, the downside, one on the upside. Just looking at the data, it's possible that we could continue further down for the next, for the rest of this quarter, maybe next quarter after a month or two, just as a relief rally. But let's look a little further at the 50% levels. I've got a lot of numbers and data on the chart, so I'll break it down as simply as possible. The little yellow circles and the pink arrows are basically takeoff points from a bear market. So the market has attempted to recover multiple times within a bear market before finally getting a low and then moving up. So if I look back, or if we take a look back at 2014 bear market after the 2013 bull, we had multiple uh, opportunities here to try to take off, but the market couldn't do it. One, two, three, and then finally we got this big move here. But obviously there were a few more attempts uh, here being the fourth. Uh, we had another one here, fifth, sixth, as the market moved up, but then fell again. If we go to 2017, one, two, three, four, five, six, a minor one here, seven, before it dumped. You can call this eight, market going up again. Market tried again and then finally took off for 2019. Through 2019, one, two, 
three. There was another couple of minor ones in here. Now the circle ones I have is just to give us a run, a number of weeks to look out for after uh, a bottom. So like an attempt, how many weeks could that attempt last for? So if we're looking here, we have seven to eight. We had another one, two, three, four, five, six uh, within this period, maybe about six to eight, depending on how you want to measure them. Then looking where we are now, we have one, two, potentially three in this zone, we attempted to break into the 40s, four, and this is our fifth attempt. So could we be similar to previous times where we've gone from around six to eight attempts to break to a new all-time high or at least break to gain some support above resistance levels? Possibly. How many weeks could we wait after an attempt, attempted move to those resistance levels? Well, looking back, we can see one, two, three, three weeks before we reversed, one, two, three, four, five weeks, one had a reversal, so we'll call that two, three, four, because that was the ultimate top, then we had one, two, and a little bit, so two weeks, but this is already after the market was absolutely smashed, had another couple of weeks up, we had one week up, and then the market fell, so the, the moves got smaller and smaller to the upside, there was just less and less push to the up before the market fell. Through 2019, one, two weeks up, one week up, bang. We tried for a few weeks here. There was a little bit of a, a, a down, of a fake to the downside, then a push up, and then we fell. And then we went for about one, two inside here. That's a three, four, five, six weeks. And then we fell from that point. Currently, what can we find? We're two weeks into this. So what we could see from the past is about four to six weeks. Some of them did do two weeks, but they were at the end of the move and they were very very weak attempts like we saw in late 2018, just extremely weak to the upside. So we're a couple of weeks into this push. We are four weeks or four attempts, maybe five attempts in. So we're getting towards the end of this period. That's why I'm still thinking that we could be into say later quarter three, maybe quarter four of 2021. I know a lot of people think that I'm entirely bearish and I think or when I say that, they probably think that I expect this to be taken out. That would be lovely. That would be absolutely amazing if we could take that out, get some lower prices in the 20s to obviously accumulate more. But that doesn't mean we have to do that. And if we do test our very strong resistance levels at the moment, which we'll look at in just a, in just a sec, and the market reversed, that's still a good point. Like that's a very significant point if the market has a higher low in this later part of the year because that gives us a setup to then work from. We want higher lows. We want the market to break through the highs, which we just saw in the last few days. So that's our first weekly high. And then we need it to come back, test some support levels, and then break up again. So we end up with one higher low, uh, one higher high, and a higher low, which is higher than this low, and then move up to a higher point, which breaks out of the previous high, which we have just done once before. That gives us a confirmed uptrend. And that is one of the defining factors of the start of a bull market. That's a much safer entry point. That's the confirmation we're looking for. So, so far, it's pretty much in an undecided territory. We are breaking through some resistance levels. We've bro broken through one of our first 50% levels, which was here at 34.5K. Then we got to our 36K level, which was right across the middle. Our next one is at around 44, but you know the main one that I'm looking at is from the major top, which was 65K, to the major lows here at 28,600. So that middle point comes out around 46 and a half. So I'm calling it 47 as a round number because we saw a major drop into 47K back in April. So I want to see it close above 47K and make some consolidation above that level because we all know markets can and do tend to push just above and then come back under just to fake us out. So a consolidation above the 47K level is definitely a stronger move after what we've seen in the past. So I've looked at what can happen in July's. We've seen it after a solid bull market. July can be a bit of a turning point and move the market in the opposite direction just as a bit of a relief. In other cases, it just continues down. But what we're seeing now, is that, well, what we did see was July move the market up. Do I think it's the final time we ever see the 30s? At this stage, possibly not, just based on what else we can see in history. And it's just, again, the patience game because we've seen markets run five to six weeks against the trend. The trend is down, markets moved up. That's five to six weeks. A lot of people are trying to call for it now when we've only been up for two weeks. And history shows that it can run more than two weeks and still reverse against us. So 
it looks good. We're not there just yet, but at least it's coming towards the end of it. You know, every week after this, we just draw closer to that bull market. So make sure you've hit the like button and you subscribed with the bell notification icon so you can continue to be updated with the long-term outlook of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as we continue through this journey. If you're not already, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram for Q&As over there. And if you haven't got on board yet, check out the Investor Accelerator. There's still a special going on at the moment. So this is for the education and uh, market updates as well. The new month of August has just started. So if you jump on board now, what you pay for is the entire month and you'll be right in front, ready to go with everyone else in the group. So as always guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.